Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to play another training game, but I'm going to play against uh, a friend of mine, uh, an internet friend of mine, uh, who is a bit higher rated than me. We've already played training games on the channel, and yeah, he he is a good player. So he's also feed rated. I I think I don't remember his rating. I think it's lower than mine, but his on online rating is higher than mine. So we'll be playing a fifteen. Uh, plus 10 game just like I've been playing uh, throughout these training sessions and okay here is the challenge wait accept okay so I have the black pieces uh, he is 21 42 good luck okay uh, plays pawn to e4 I will try to concentrate because this game is going to be tougher than than the games I've been playing so far. Let me just... Okay. Uh, I cannot remember what he played against the Karo Khan and I want to play the Karo Khan. I think he played the advanced variation, although I'm not sure. Maybe he played Panov. I really don't remember anymore. I think we played a year ago or something. Ah, now he wrote in the chat, Oh, Karo again, we played so many advanced. <laughs> yeah, so he plays the advanced variation. Now, I, I, I mean, I wish you could see the chat, but you cannot see the chat. He says, let's choose the classical this time. Okay. Uh, I will play bishop f5. I switched back to bishop f5 instead of the Karpov recently. I enjoy it a bit more now. Uh, I don't know why. I think it's it's because I don't want to have my bishop stuck on c8. Uh, bishop d2. Okay, knight f6 to prevent knight e4 if bishop d6. Now now it's a matter of preference and so here's the thing about the Karo Khan white has more space black is playing on the first three ranks white's pieces are way more active and much better but if the pieces get get traded off the pawn structure is so good for black that any end game should be better in fact any end game should be much better for black so especially in this classical line with h4 h5 because the h5 pawn is quite a weakness usually the pawn structure is going to be with pawns on g4 and and f3 just to support that okay castle screen side that's normal i will play bishop d6 uh and i will play for queen c7 castle screen side myself he didn't play c4 he could play c4 now Uh, if he plays c4 and I play queen c7 and he plays c5, I will play bishop f4. As I said, in, in this opening, it's not really advisable to... Well, there are some pawn sacrifice lines which you could go for, but usually usually it's best to, to trade the knight on e4, the bishop on f4, preferably the queens, and then to go for an endgame. Oh, sorry, I got the book mouse pad here, but I didn't put my mouse on, on the on the pad. Sorry about the scratching, if, if you minded it again. So I seem to be playing a lot of Karo Khans now, which I really like. Someone said, why don't you just play the Karo Khan as your main opening anymore? I, I don't know, I just wanted to stop playing it, but I love it. Okay, King B1 is normal. Uh, that prevents bishop f4. <clears throat> I will play queen c7 anyway. Threatening to win a pawn, so knight e4. 
also not only threatening to win the F2 pawn, but also weakening the H5 pawn. The one pawn I don't want to win is the G2 pawn, because then G7 would be very weak. And that's uh, that can happen if you ever play E5 in these lines. In some Karo Khans, black plays E5. But in this line, uh, if you play E5, then this knight from G3 can swoop into F5 and just win everything. Okay, now I'm gonna castle queen side. And if queen g4, uh, I will play rook h to g8. If knight e5, I will take it because it wins a pawn for the moment. If bishop c3, uh, hmm, I don't know. I want to play king b8 at some point. I also don't know if I want to play knight f6 or knight b6 and knight d5. I want to keep the option of knight f6 because if the if the rook should move, then I would have an easy target on h5. The thing about this this position and similar positions, if white doesn't get a pawn storm on the king side, if black doesn't allow it with king side castling, and if black doesn't give up a pawn on the queen side for something weird on the c and the b files, which there there is a gambit, I don't remember the name, in which, uh, in which black plays b5 and just gives up a pawn after white has played c4. If one of those two things doesn't happen, then it's usually a very boring game. And and most likely the knights are going to get traded off and the bishops are going to get traded off. And as I said, that's good for black. I won a lot of games in, in the late middle game with very few pieces on the board. Especially if, if you only have two rooks and the queens on the board, then black should be Black's position should be very pleasant. For example, rook uh, d5 to g5 uh, or to a5, queen to a5, queen to e7 to g5. There are a lot of infiltration points, whereas black really has one weakness, and that's the g7 pawn. And even if that drops, it's not the end of the world. It's bad, but it's not the end of the world. And it's hard to find the plan. Hmm. I wonder what he's going to do. I don't think c4 is such a good idea. Although after c4, I wouldn't play bishop f4 because bishop c3. If c4, I could play bishop e7 and just defend my my stuff. c4, bishop e7, bishop c3, bishop f6. Now that the king is on b1, it seems like a good idea to read out this bishop to f6, but if the bishop stays on d2, I'm going to leave the bishop on e7, because I want to be able to meet bishop f4 with bishop d6. Okay, he plays that straight away. Hmm. Without c4, this seems to be begging for knight f6, knight d5. I don't know what the idea behind bishop c3 without c4 is, because he's never chasing my bishop away. He spent several minutes on this move. Okay, so if I go knight f6, he has the e5 square for his knight. 
knight f6, queen, let's say, d3, and knight d5. And I guess he moves the bishop away. Where else can he move his queen? Knight f6, maybe queen e3, but that loses the bishop. Queen e2. Yeah, I will play it, because it develops a piece with tempo, with two tempi actually. And I don't think he can afford giving up the c3 bishop in this position. I think he should have played c4 before before that, because then he always has a threat of c5 and, and bishop f4. I don't know, but I think I don't think I've seen Bishop C three before C four. Of course, by by playing Knight of six, Knight D five, and giving giving up the E five square, he can play Knight E five. But if he gives up his Bishop, I can give up mine. And if the pawn ends up on E five, there's this pawn structure with one circle of pawns h6 g7 f7 e6 and then h5 g4 f4 e5 that looks like a circle in which whoever seizes the open file should be better and since we are sharing the file we sh should be equal also it's about the squares for the knights and I, i'm not able to visualize whose knight would be better there No, wait, he would have... No, no, we, I'm assuming we trade the knights off. So knight d5, let's say knight e5 takes on c3, takes, takes, everything gets traded off. The queens get traded off. Symmetrical pawn structure on the queen side and that circular pawn structure on the king side, where his pawns are a bit more advanced. Now there are some interesting jumps, definitely knight g4 he would have to move the queen again oh this looks lovely i have knight d5 and knight g4 everything seems very very tempting he basically after knight d5 he only has bishop d2 and then i'm forcing a trade of bishops giving up the e5 square If I play knight g4, how does he defend? He probably plays rook d2. If I play knight d5, he plays bishop d2. Aha, and then I play knight f4 and he has to take. Because his queen is attacked. His g2 pawn is attacked. His h4 pawn is attacked. I will play that. I need to start putting pressure on his position and and I I want to spend as, as little time as possible. I remember games with him would go into sight not. Now e5 does seem tempting. I could also play bishop b4. 
But then I'm giving up e5 again. Whoa, he just he just does that. So yeah, now we are going to get the symmetrical pawn structure I was talking about. I think I should be better here. This endgame has to be better for me. Let's just focus and calculate. I have this discovery on the queen, but there's nothing I can do with it. So after bishop takes knight, d takes knight. I don't have a good discovery with the knight. Because the queen just moves. Ah, but I do! Okay, bishop takes knight, pawn takes bishop, knight f4. If he wants to save the pawn, he has to play queen f1, and then I take the rook, queen takes rook, and knight takes g2 wins a pawn. Okay, I'm going to do it. But he can... I don't want to take the g2 pawn. I don't want to take the g2 pawn. Yeah, I definitely don't want to take the g2 pawn. Uh, I don't have any other good discoveries. Knight f4, queen f1, rook takes rook, queen takes rook. I cannot find a good move. I was thinking rook d7, but then he just moves the bishop away. I cannot afford to allow the bishop into d6, that would be dreadful. I still think I want to keep my knight, but if he plays c4 I don't want to keep my knight, so I'll take. I don't want to take on g2, <clears throat> I would have lost the g7 pawn for sure. Okay, now let's double. Because if he takes, I take with the queen, still control the file, and I should have a slight edge. He doesn't have time for queen g3 because they play rook h to d8 and if he takes, rook takes, he's still hanging back rank mate. And if I play f6 and he takes, I take the queen first and then trade off and then I get rid of my g7 weakness. I 
I mean, this is exactly what I was talking about, getting an endgame with two rooks and the queen, in which black is slightly better. And now you can see why. The h for the h5 pawn, the e5 pawn, the d5 square, the d5. We will see. There's still a lot of play. If he could occupy d6, somehow, whole different story. But I don't think he can. He could try rook d3 isolating or making his c2 pawn backwards because he couldn't take with the queen because they take on e5. Yeah, that's the problem. That's why I don't really like the classical with h4, h5 for white. If you don't win, in the opening or in the middle game, it's very likely that you don't win. I mean, of course, I'm not saying black is much better here. I'm saying that white, if, if anybody is better, it should be black. Okay, king b1, rook hd8. Like I intended. And now I think I should just be centralizing my pieces somehow. Okay, he, he does want to play queen g3 at some point. So I'll have to watch out for that. For now I think f6 has to be good, because he cannot take. Because I would take on, on f4. I need to get rid of my g7 weakness, because if that drops... And also this defends laterally. funny that he played king b1 and then king c1. You don't see that very often. Now that I played f6, I definitely don't have as many weaknesses as he does. Okay, he wants to take a7. Well... So I take on e5, he takes on a7, I take on f4, that should be good for me. I take on e5, he takes with the queen, I take with my queen, that should be equal. I take on e5, he takes with the pawn, I play queen a5, attacking a2, also preparing rook d5. I don't think I have many better options, so I'm just going to take. <coughs> Also, if he takes on a7, I'm going to exchange the, rook for, the rooks first, and then take on f4.
Okay, now queen a5 seems normal. And then he couldn't play king b1 because I take the rooks. <clears throat> Okay, I'll just play quickly. Uh, I'm, I'm ahead on time and queen f5 makes sense. I don't think it could be a blunder. So he should take on d7 and I take on d7 and then he plays king b1 and then I probably play queen d5 and threaten checkmate. So I like my position. I mean, I have control over the d-file so the activity is on my side. The pawn structure is now much better for white, because have a backwards g7 pawn. But he still has the weakness on e5 and h5, so... And if I could win e5, then I think his position just collapses. I certainly win a pawn if he plays a3, for example. a3, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, king takes rook. And then queen d5 check. Okay, he exchanges first. That makes sense. Now, double threat. I don't want to give up a7 though. I wanted to play queen d5 and after queen a7 I wanted to take on, on g2 but there's so much he can do against that. I will just give my king an escape square and play b6, just a safe move. I can do everything I wanted to do one move later. I need to make sure that I don't get per perpetual checked. It's not like he can do much. Because if he plays rook d1 then I take it, king takes and still queen d5. And if he covers with the queen I take on e5, if he moves the king I take on g2. So if I'd played queen d5, queen takes a7, queen a2, he would have to go for a perpetual. And he would have one because queen a5 check, king c8, queen a8 check. I think he would have a perpetual, otherwise I, I just made him with queen a1. But I didn't, didn't want to allow any tricks. Maybe I should have gone for that. Ah, so now he just wants to trade everything with rook d1. Okay, I will play <coughs> rook d5, just to put pressure on the pawn, to see what he does.
<coughs> so now he cannot <coughs> undefend his rook because my queen attacks it. But he could play queen f2. I think I'll just play. Oh no, I'm not gonna do that. I think I may get my king closer to the f-file, but if I play king d7, he plays rook d1. Okay, so I think I want to control the f2 square, but then he jumps into f3. But then I have queen c4. So queen c5, if queen f3, then queen c4. Okay, I will do that. I, I need to... Also, if... If he plays queen a6 check, then king b8. And then if rook f1... I could just play queen... No, I don't have to do anything. I could just take on e5, because my queen defends f8. Oh, this is going to be tough. It's very hard not to make mistakes. So, I take on e5 plays queen a6, check. I play king b8, he plays rook to f7. And who is mating whom? I think I'm mating him. Rook e5, queen a6, king b8, rook f7. Rook e5, queen a6, king b8, rook f7, rook e1 check, king d2, queen e3 checkmate. Let's reverse the move order. Rook e5, he has to play queen a6. This works. This works. He cannot afford to move both his pieces away from the back rank. If he plays rook f7, he, he gets mated. Otherwise, I just play rook f5. And then pull up. Mate in two. 
exactly what I'd cal calculated happened. Okay. Good game. Okay, uh, whoa. Uh, I'm not going to be analyzing the game now. As I said, yeah, uh, he says time management decided. I agree. I couldn't agree more. It's it's really tough to play uh, queen and rook end games with little time on the clock. That's just that's just not easy. I'm sure Akuros wouldn't have blundered rook f7. It wasn't that hard to see. Okay, uh, hope you like the game. The Karokan wins again. <laughs> uh, see you tomorrow, guys. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye.